Hey everyone, this is a follow-up video to a post I made uh, on dynamic jigsaw puzzle generation. And I've done a few takes already, and this is a bit more complicated to explain than I had originally um, assumed it would be. But <laughs> once you get the concept down, it is very straightforward. Uh, it's just trying to figure out the little things that I've done here um, that is difficult. So if you haven't checked out the post already, go back and look at the first post. In there I have uh, a shader that I've given you, and at the very top I had some comments um, that I thought would all be all you needed to kind of figure this out, but I guess there's a little bit more um, that needs to be explained. So grab that shader, read through that post a little bit, um, sort of get a feel for the overall concept, and then come back here. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give you guys a script. So it's not a shader, it's an actual script. You'll just throw it on a game object. Um, add in the correct uh, things in the inspector. These will be the three masks from the previous video. Um, how many columns slash rows is how many pieces of the puzzle. And then uh, the piece prefab, I'm not sure if it needs to be anything fancy. Uh, I just have a script on here that I use to grab the renderer, I think. And then, you know, this is just a quad. And I think the size in game, I put it down to two, but I think, yeah, three would connect it. So if you are using my script, um, basically line for line, and you want your pieces to line up perfectly, you're going to make them up scale 3. Uh, and you'll understand why in a second. So, to go back to the code, and to jump right in, on start, allocate some arrays, pretty simple, uh, jump straight into building pieces. This part right here, is for positional offset. So that's not very complex. That's just whatever positions uh, according to the, the scale of your objects. So you can tweak that a little bit uh, as well as the scale. Uh, here is where the, the very confusing part of all this is. I'm trying to explain this. So I get the UV width and the UV height of each piece that we're going to have. This is us trying to figure out what part of the puzzle we're going to pull from. And I actually alter it down below. So it's not even just that. Um, so this, this is actually dumb to explain without going down here. So for every single piece, we create a piece uh, prefab. We instantiate a pre piece prefab. We take that piece, we do some positioning, and we save its renderer for later. Um, after that, we get its UVs. This line right here is very confusing, but it's super important. Um, if you've never worked with UV tubes before, meshes can hold multiple UVs, and I don't remember how many uh, is the limit for Unity, but for sure you can keep stuff in UV2. And what I use UV2 for is for the masks. By, by doing this line of code right here, we actually save UV2 to be just the original UVs. So whatever we use UV2 for, it's the full image. Um, this allows our masks to be their full image. Instead of when we cut apart the puzzle, it would, and we use those UVs, it would also cut apart the mask. And we don't want to do that. We, we want to use the full mask for uh, all of the masks for each of our pieces. So we save this here. This is easy. This just stays like this. Then for each piece's UV, we change it. We map it to the exact piece of the puzzle that we want to see. And like I said, up here, I cut it into uh, chunks based on how many columns and rows, but also we're altering it here based on these numbers. And the numbers won't necessarily make sense right off the bat. Instead of just using i, comma j for the bottom left corner, we're using i minus 1 and j minus 1. And to show why, it's because of how the system works. So this is the point that you would expect to be the, the bottom left corner of your UV. 
Instead, we're going further out. We're going one piece further out. You can imagine this as one piece of the puzzle further out. Um, and we do that for every single direction. So what you end up with is a larger piece, and the reason for that is so that... Um, the reason for that is so that you can get these connector pieces. Right now, uh, I'm only, I only have a connector that goes out a bit, like maybe half or so of a width. But you could do connectors that go even further out because of how large the, the actual puzzle piece is. Um, <clears throat> so going back to this, that's just trying to explain these numbers here. We're not only UVing, we're not only changing the UV of each piece to be a section of the puzzle, we're changing each piece's UV to be a 3x3 three three of the puzzle, which we will then mask over to give us our final piece. Cool. I think that was the best... <laughs> that wrap-up right there was the best way that I've explained it so far. And then we just do that for every piece. We offset it for as we go by row and by column. Now down here is where you actually randomly assign if it's going to be a connector, and when I say connector, I mean a piece. Uh, when I say connector, I mean this. And when I say inverted, I mean this. And then when I say mask, I mean if it's on an edge, you basically just black that shit out. <clears throat> so, we go back into the code. Up here, this gets the UVs right. If you just use zero masks, every single piece would look like a 3x3 three three of the entire puzzle. Down here is where we set the masks. So for every single piece, we grab the renderer that we saved earlier. Um, you can do this in a few different ways, but I'm using a material property block, which you create a new one, you get the block from the renderer, which I don't know if you even need to do this, um, and then you start setting the, the material property block properties as opposed to the actual uh, renderer's properties. But it's the same, basically, setting the renderer's properties, because at the bottom, we just set the renderer's property block to the, the property block that we created. So <clears throat> you get this, you set its color to white. I don't even know. I guess I have color in here. So you can change each piece's color individually if you want. Uh, for now, set it to white. And then this is just basic logic, where I believe I'm using okay top connector and right connector. So, the plan is, we start in the bottom left, and I think we go across this way. So, first piece, because it's an edge, if we check to the left, we see that we're on an edge, so we do a mask here. <clears throat> I believe in the next one, we uh, it goes left, right, top, bottom. So then we go to the right. On the right, because this is actually we have nothing here, we're going to set a boolean variable to see if this is going to be a connector or if this is going to be inverted. So it's just random. We're just doing this randomly. When a uh, uh, random range, what, it's, yeah, it's exclusive on the max. So this is a number between 0 and 1. If it's 0, we're going to make it a connector. So if it's 0, we make it a connector, we save that variable in one of our arrays, um, and then we go to top. We do the same thing. Let's say this one's an inverted one. And then we go to bot, we see we're on an edge, um, and we set this mask. So, you do this here, and then you go bottom right. I believe it goes through the puzzle like this, and that ensures that there will always be either something to your left or you'll be on an edge and there will always be something above you or you'll be on an edge. So the logic works out where every single puzzle or every single piece of the puzzle will get a properly randomized um, I don't know what you want to call it but they will every single piece will be random and you can change that with how you want like you could save pieces 
and you could find you could figure out your own system for um, putting the masks on these pieces. Basically, is what I'm saying. This is just random. All right, very basic, very random. Once you go through setting every single, <laughs> yeah, very random. Uh, so much randomness. No. Um, once you go through setting every single uh, mask from left, right, top, bot, you just set the renderers property block to the property block that we created, and you're done. Goes through every single one, sets every single one's property block, and you get this. Um, to go back and show what it would look like if I actually had them all be size 3, or scale of 3, which is what my code uses to make it look exact, you get this. <clears throat> and I'm, I don't know if, uh, I don't know how exact you'd want to get this, but I'm pretty sure you could tweak textures, you could tweak the masks, and you can get it so that it's like very precise. Right now I believe my masks have some form of, I don't think they're, uh, yeah, there's some gray. So, on the edges here, why you can see this like uh, subtle outline of a puzzle piece is because it's gray. Um, if the mask was pure white, it would be it would be like a very harsh cut. Um, so yeah, I hope that explained it a bit more. I don't know if I'm gonna. I'll write some more in the post. Uh, ask me any questions you want. But again, overall, really simple. Uh, Position stuff, you can figure out for what piece sizes you want. Um, and that includes the scale. So when I say size, it's actually the piece scale. Um, uh, so positioning the pieces, then UV mapping the pieces properly, which I tried to explain here. And then once you've done, you, you finished UV mapping, you go down and you set each puzzle piece's mask. Uh, each puzzle piece is multiple masks for left, right, top, and bot. And then once you get the whole picture in front of you, regardless of how complicated it was, how I just explained it there, it should make sense. You should end up with something like this. Uh, and if you're using it for like a game or something, um, you just have to worry about draw calls. Right now I actually got it so that each piece is only one draw call. I worked really hard to try to get them to batch, but I'm not I'm not too good with shaders, so I'm pretty sure it was just impossible in the first place, but I tried to get it to work. Um, it doesn't, but uh, since they're quads, it doesn't really matter if you have tons of them, um, for the tries and vert count at least, so I don't know how much having too many draw calls of these things really would mess the phone up. Um, PC, it doesn't matter. I'm pretty sure you could use this for for PC uh, very efficiently. It only matters for like older phones right now. Um, so yeah, that's about it. Let me know if you have any questions. Hit me up. Thanks.